Hi, and welcome to part four of our PowerShell Universal tutorial series. In the last couple of videos, we've seen how to make our basic routes and then routes with query strings. And then we also saw in the last video how to create a route that we can pass in a body into in order to perform actions with the contents of that body. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at two different things. We're gonna be taking a look at how to create routes that support different methods. And we're also gonna be taking a look at how to add authentication for your routes. Now, although the free version doesn't include authentication per se, as in like enterprise authentication, there are still ways that you can actually authenticate your routes. And there's actually two different ways that we can actually put in place this authentication. And we're gonna be going over those two different ways of authentication in this video. So without further ado, let's actually go ahead and let's get started by creating some endpoints with a different method here. So this is actually very, very straightforward. Nothing really changes when you're creating a route with a get method or with a post method in terms of the code that you're going to be writing. The only thing that really changes is the method that you actually set up when you're creating the route and also when you're calling the route through your PowerShell code or through any other programming languages that let you make an API call, uh, which is the majority of them. So let's go ahead and let's create a route called post example here. And we're gonna create it with the post method. So one thing to note is you can actually select multiple of these methods. It will let you select all of them if you want to. And that will just make that your users can call it using all sorts of different methods but you should try to stick to really the standard um, method um, functions. So get would be typically to get or fetch information. You're not really doing any manipulations. Post would be if you're updating information or creating information. That is often also used with put or patch. Delete would be, of course, pretty straightforward, deleting something. Options would be maybe you're updating some options um, to something as well. So just make sure that you try to pick the method that more suits what the route is actually doing. So let's go ahead and let's click on OK here. And we're just going to edit the properties. So we're going to disable authentication for now because we're going to be taking a look at authentication just a little bit later on. We're going to set the environment to PowerShell 7 like we always do. We're going to click on OK. And we're just going to go ahead and edit the details here. And we're just going to put here a very simple get computer info, just purely for an example. We're going to hit save and we're going to go ahead and copy the code that it gives us to be able to run in Visual Studio Code. We're going to paste that in here and we're going to see that this works at 100% with the post method. If we try to run the same route with the get method, uh, we will see that it actually does fail. We get a 404 not found. Now, let's say you create a route and you realize that maybe the post method wasn't the right method here. Maybe it was supposed to be a get because all I'm getting is the computer info. You can actually change the method on your route without deleting the route and recreating it. You can just edit the properties here, delete the post method, and just simply add the get method, click on OK. Now, the one thing you will notice is, let's go ahead and let's go back into our code. If we run the get method now, we will see that it works. But if you try to run the post method, you will also see that it works as well. Now, what I've found typically is even if you come in here and hit restart APIs, so let's hit restart API, it's done. Let's go ahead and let's run the post method here. It still gives us the reply. What I usually find I have to do is I have to come into my services, find PowerShell Universal, and just hit restart on it. And that's going to restart the PowerShell Universal service as a whole. And now if we do the get method, we're going to see that it still works. It's probably not up yet. Just have to wait for the service to fully come back up first. There it is. So it is back up now and it works with our get method. 
And now if we try the post method, we will get a 404 not found. Even though the service is up, we can keep running it. We will get a 404 not found because we have fully updated it now to the get method. So now if we actually refresh this, we will see that it is get and only the get will work. So if you do change your method, I would definitely recommend restarting the service. Just make sure if you are doing this in production that you schedule that downtime because if you have any scripts that are actually running against your PowerShell Universal at the time, any calls will actually fail for that. Um, so that's where maybe deleting the endpoint and then recreating it might be beneficial, um, but you don't actually have to do that. You can actually just change it directly in here. So with that, we can actually go ahead and just delete this route. And we're going to be taking a look at authentication now. Now, before we take a look at authentication here, let's go ahead, let's create our route. And let's just create our route as a secured route. We're just going to call the URL secured. It's going to be a get method. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to edit the properties. We're going to leave authentication as enabled here. And we're just going to set the environment to PowerShell 7. And we're going to click on OK. So now our route is authenticated. We go ahead, let's edit the code. We're going to do get computer info again here just as a very basic commandlet that we know works and doesn't take very much time to set up, but we can actually test what we want with that. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the code that it gives us. And let's go ahead and let's paste that in here. So if we actually try to run this, we're gonna get a different error, which is a 401 unauthorized. So the authentication is already working, but we haven't been able to authenticate yet. So what we actually need to do is we need to go ahead and create a new identity. Now you can use the admin identity. I don't wanna use the admin identity because I would have to put in my admin password into the screen for you guys to see. Not that it's a password that I use with anything, but just as a practice here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into security and then identities, and we're gonna add new identity. For the name, we're gonna call it user. And for the role, we're going to give it the user role for now. And the password, we're going to put it as test. So there it is. We have the password test and the username as user here. We're going to click on OK. And there it is. So we have our user created. So now what we can actually do is try to actually authenticate. So what we can do is we can do an invoke web request. And we're going to do it against HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 5000 slash API slash V1 slash sign in. And we're going to pass in a body. We're going to do a pair of parentheses, then an at symbol, and then a pair of curly brackets. Then in here, we're just going to create our PowerShell object here. So we're going to put username is equal to user. And we're going to put password is equal to test. And then what we want to do is after the curly bracket here, we're going to pipe that to a convert to JSON. And we're going to want to make sure that we put in, like we saw in the last video, our content type, uh, which for us is going to be once again, application slash JSON. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to create a session variable and our session variable is going to be called my session. And then the method for this API call is going to be a post. So what this is actually going to do is once we run it, we get a status code of 200, which is okay. So what that does is actually it creates a variable called my session and it's a web session. So if we actually go ahead and we look at the variable my session, we actually see that it is a cookie container. And what we can do is on this invoke rest method, we can do a web session here and we can actually put in my session and we can go ahead and run this and we actually get our computer info back. Now, as you saw, we are just a regular user and we were still able to just authenticate. So anyone was able to authenticate really 
any level, as long as you're authenticated on this route, you'll be able to access it. Now, in order to add securities to it, we can actually come back into the endpoints. We see our secured route here. We can edit the properties and we can put it to role of administrator. Only administrators have access to this route. So if we click on OK now and we come back into our Visual Studio code and we try to run it, we will actually get a 403 forbidden because we aren't allowed to access that. So an easy way to fix that, of course, would be to edit the route. We can come in here, we can add user has access to it. And we click on OK. If we go ahead, we come back here and we run it, we get our computer info once again. So we are able to authenticate because our roles match. Now, let's say you wanted to take a slightly different approach. You wanted to give more custom error responses when someone isn't authenticated, you can actually do that as well. So the only thing that we would want to do in this case is actually remove all the roles. So any authenticated user can actually hit the route. And in the route, what we will actually want to do here, let me just expand this, let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can actually see what I'm doing, is we are going to have a if statement here. We're going to have if, open parentheses, roles, dash contains, oops, dash contains. And then we're just going to do a pair of single quotes, administrator, and then open and close curly bracket, and then the elf open and close curly bracket. So if it's the administrator, you want to return the get computer info. Otherwise, what I want to do is I want to return a custom error message. So we're going to return we're going to say you do not have the rights to this endpoint. Please contact your administrator. And you'd be able to give maybe um, your email or something like that in there for the response so they would know who to email if they don't know who the administrator is. So once we actually hit save here, we can actually do this route and we actually get back you do not have the rights to this endpoint please contact your administrator now of course you can create a nice object and return the object in fact that's what i would typically definitely recommend doing and then what we can actually do is just to show you guys how this actually works is if the roles contains let's say user here and we're going to hit save and we hit run we will see that we get our computer info back. So you can completely um, fully customize inside the endpoint. Maybe you want to have an endpoint that has different results based on the roles that you have. This would be the way to do it. Um, you're going to see that this can come in handy once we start designing graphical user interfaces. You can decide, design the graphical user interface based on the roles that the user has. Um, so instead of completely cutting off the users from being able to authenticate against this route, we just remove all the roles, still have the authentication enabled. So we take in the roles and you need to be at least logged in and have an account on PowerShell Universal to be able to access the information but then you'd be able to have some different levels of information really um, based on your roles. So that is the two different ways that you can do authentication with PowerShell Universal. Um, so there are definitely a lot of tools to, um, to use on PowerShell Universal. Now, like I said, this still doesn't really help you with enterprise authentication as that is only for licensed instances. But at least with the free edition, you do have two ways of authenticating and you can do some pretty neat things with just the free version. Now, of course, you'll have to create accounts for people um, and they'll have to use a different password and a different username probably than what they would typically use to log in to their computer or to their Microsoft 365 environment or their Google environment, depending on what environments you have in your workplace. So in the next videos, we're going to be start taking a look at the different user interfaces options in PowerShell Universal. 
if you guys want to see anything specific with the user interfaces or if you guys want some more things with the API endpoints or if you guys want to see some more features of PowerShell Universal that I haven't covered yet, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to cover all of them. And like I said, at the end of this series, we're going to have a little project that we're going to be doing with PowerShell Universal as well, which is going to incorporate everything that we're learning with the endpoints and the graphical user interface to be able to make a fully functional tool that you can use in your environment. Uh, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.